Saturday morning. About to go for my ride. But it turns out something else is going to happen. So I've just uh, got a note from Ben O'Connor. I can talk now. So there's the benefit of getting up early on a Saturday morning. I'm going to have a chat with one of Australia's, uh, well, to be honest, one of Australia's best athletes in 2022. Okay. It's early in the morning, I'm in my kit because I'm about there for a ride, but I've just got a note from Ben O'Connor saying I can talk now, so I'm going to do that. And here he is, he's just joined me, so he's probably heard all of that, and I'm going to just chuck him into the stream. Welcome, mate. Hey, Rob. You well? I'm good. I am good. Just in the home watching the snow. Thanks for taking the time to have a chat. So, first of all, congratulations on uh, Walter Catalonia. That was uh, a nice stage win and a good top 10 again early in the season. Yeah, it was good. I was super happy with how it went, but I was a little bit disappointed by how uh, Boy Tal uh, went the final, the the final big mountain stage where I had the jersey and I lost it on the on the climb. I think uh, I made a bit of a mistake. So it's and what actually also wasn't my best day. So I was a little bit disappointed, but uh, it, it was the first time I was in that position. I think uh, it was also the first time uh, Asia Dessert had been in a leader's jersey in a World Tour race since almost Carlos Balancourt, I think, back in Paris. So that was a long time ago, <laughs> as you probably remember. So I think it was a, a nice step for, for the team and uh, also for, for, for me, you know, it kind of shows where, where you can be in these uh, stage races now. I hadn't really thought about that. So did it, do you think that that served the team well just to, um, I guess, uh, get a reminder of what they need to do should they get the leader's jersey in the future? I think actually the way that we raced on that stage was perfect. The only key that was missing was uh, my legs on the final like kilometer and a half on that climb. So it, I was also surprised me when I heard this. Um, I maybe thought that Roman had done it before or Pierre, um, as in Roman Bardet and Pierre Latour, but no. Uh, so it's I think it's good for, for the team to know that it's like a step that actually we can do. And the boys took it on really well. And, after the race, they were really proud and uh, and they actually just wanted to do it again and it gave them such a clear objective rather than uh, racing for, you know, for breakaways and, and opportunities. So I think it shows in the, maybe another direction which the team can, can head in again, um, maybe in the future, <laughs> if I can uh, not blow again. <laughs> Yeah, but it, there's confidence and then, it, you know, and learning that's come from the, the early races this year. But it's also, we spoke a year ago around now when you just had one of your early races with AJ2R, it's a joint team. Yeah. And you were adjusting to the, to the, to the new habitat, let's say. But yeah. you very much, uh, you've settled there. It seems like you're comfortable. It seems like everyone appreciates your, what your input is. Can you just give a little comparison to 2022 versus last year when it all began? I'd probably say that now, I mean, now is actually a lot easier because you have a clear objective of the rider that you are, the objectives that you want to hit for, and you know that you can do it because now you've done it also last year as well. So there's a much more clear plan for, once again, objectives and goals. It's easy to say, you know, like, oh, look, I reckon you're strong enough to finish top 10 in a, in Romandy or in Dauphiné, but until you've done it before, you have to kind of break that ice. So now that you've found your your spot and you've also found kind of what you're capable of, it's easier to plan it, easier to to find form, and uh, and also it's probably better now actually because you're more strict. I would say probably our time because you're a bit more. Uh, it's very clear what you have to do in a bike race, you know, like it's a, there's no, or look, maybe you've got a bit of a free roll. And it's like, no, no, you're, you know, you have to finish this off. So you kind of got a different stress, but in the end, the stress is actually what you put yourself into. You know, that's, I asked to try, I want to be a GC racer. I could have just stayed as a opportunistic uh, breakaway kind of guy, but, I dream of being able to do this in bike races and actually win the whole race rather than just uh, little stories uh, that are part of the race. Okay. Well, that's a great little summary. I mean, uh, fourth in the Tour de France puts you up there as being a favourite for the title. I'm sorry to talk about the Tour de France in April, but, uh, you know, that's uh, 
what we That's okay, I'm on a French team, so. <laughs> when you have guys like Pogacar as the rival, is do you don't feel beaten before the race because he just seems to be able to do whatever he wants. You kind of have to accept the fact that, you know, Tade and more or less Primoz are kind of on that next path. I think about being a tennis player for the last 10 years, it only falls on a few people. Um, and if it's you, it comes down to all sorts of different factors. Uh, yeah, you just have to do your best, prepare your best. You know, if you get there, you get smashed out of the water or on Alpe d'Huez, on stage, whatever it is, then voila, that's kind of what it is. It's not, you just have to do the best that you can prep and aim for uh, and see how it goes. And just make sure you execute everything perfectly. I think it's okay to get beaten, but to uh, to make mistakes is the... Uh, the problem so you know if you make no mistakes you get beaten then you just have to look at it the you know afterwards and say okay how do we then improve um and eventually there will be a ceiling where you can't improve anymore but i know well at least i feel personally there's always a a ceiling that's that's been rising um there's always been this next bit i can try and grab so I'll be also really interested to see how much further it can keep uh, developing and uh, improving. But yeah, I, I can only sum it up in that kind of tennis analogy because that's the only thing I can think of that's kind of more or less as relatable. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Harry Nice didn't go too well for you. You had a, an illness, is that right? Yeah, I was super sick. I had a, like a shocking fever and flu. I was completely written off. It was a... I was actually sitting before the time trial just thinking, oh, maybe I should, uh, I hadn't left the hotel yet. I'd slept all night doing like, so I, I had not slept all night doing like hallucinations, just like spinning in the room. I'm like, oh God, I'm really not good. And then uh, I was sitting outside of the hotel. I left, I think about an hour after the boys being like, do I, should I start, should I not? And then literally as I hopped into the car, I was like, no, this, this is stupid. Like, I'm so sick. This is ridiculous. Start a TT. I'm not even going to be able to get, finish the next step if I'm still like this. I got to the car and I was driving back towards Lyon where I could stay the night in the hotel to try to get back home to Andorra. And I was just dying in the car. It was like sheep white. I couldn't open my eyes. I was uh, shivering. It was, uh, it was pretty grim. It was a good flu. Definitely a big right. flu. So uh, that's why Paranese wasn't the best. Okay, but the, the, the illnesses seem to be one of the major themes of 2022. Like, there's, you know, the field's yeah. decimated. Is it... Well, I reckon it's probably just because we've been so clean and hygienic for so long, especially here in Europe, um, with the mask kind of stuff. I think it's a lot of people haven't been exposed to just the general illness for two and a bit years. So I think now she's back with a bit of a vengeance and uh, <laughs> and hitting us all for six a little bit. But, I mean, it's just part and parcel of of living. You're going to get sick eventually. Um, I just think that uh, after so much time of being very clean, I think everyone, um, it's going to it's come back to, to get us. So, yeah. I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay now, so I'm fine. <laughs> Did you get COVID at all? No, no. I... I was probably I've been a lot, I was a lot more sick than pretty much all of my teammates that got it, and I probably at least I'd say like seventy percent of my teammates have had COVID so far. So it's uh, just the luck of the dice, isn't it? I probably had it before. I just don't know when. <laughs> and does it feel like it's just the propeloton illness, or uh, in society in Andorra, for example? Everyone. Yeah. Yeah, everyone, my fiance was super. Every, I mean, once again, society that I see is obviously very, it's like you have that cycle bubble kind of thing, but uh, the lab that you have to go to get the PCR test before a big race or get your UCI quarterly blood test, stuff like that. They were saying like so many people are sick, all the girls at the lab were crook oh. the, the last week, so it's just a, just a thing. It is also winter, I remember. I mean, it seems like I've asked this question every time we speak. Does it still feel novel and new and fun and exciting, or is it just like a job these days? Or, you know, just tell me about bike riding for you right at this minute. No, I mean, for sure, it definitely is a job, but the objective is far bigger than the job kind of aspect of it. Um, I mean, you know that you're you're obviously getting paid 
well to do your job, but you also then have to perform to keep doing your job. Um, so mm. I'm loving it so far. It's been uh, really, really interesting how you change up each season. Um, and also living here in Europe uh, all year, not going back to Australia, being in full winter with the full kind of mountain life that's up here in Andorra. So it's been very, very interesting and, and, and changeable. And I think this year is a completely different circus to last year because, as I said before, it's a full plan. You know, you have this whole schedule of this is what you will be like to them perform, you know, um, whilst last year was kind of finding yourself I had a, was like one year contract at the time, uh, this time with, with Azure Desert Friends. So you were in a completely different ballpark. Uh, <laughs> and I wasn't performing to the same consistent uh, level either. You know, um, it now feels almost, you know, it is kind of obligatory to kind of finish in the top 10 of the races that I start. So it's now a very different game. Whilst last year I hadn't finished in the top 10 of a world tour stage race until, until Romandy. So, you know, it's, it's changed, it changed fast and uh, it's definitely new. <laughs> the audition is over. Now it's time to perform. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Just well, because, you know, we're talking to cycling people. So I just wonder if we can go through some of the, maybe just because it's early in the year, but talking about your bike itself to set up, is there anything that, um, can you give us a little bit of technical uh, insight, any changes, any, um, improvements to your position or uh... i don't fiddle with my position ever like literally i do zero i've kept it since i started with bmc with dimension data and ntt it's more or less stayed exactly the same um maybe the only thing i've done is put the saddle forward a tiny bit but off the top of my head i still don't really remember what the setback is so and i've also changed saddle but i changed that last year um to the physique adaptive foam thing with the cutout, which is absolute champion of the saddle. Um, but yeah, no, it's literally technical wise, very, very little has changed. Uh, even when I changed from Shimano to, to Campagnola, I've more or less kept the same setup with the bars and the hood height and stuff like this. Uh, I'd say the most important factor now is got, got to do with tires, tire pressure, wheels. I mean, tyres, once again, are changing a lot. You have normula, tubular compound, the super light tubular compound. You also then have the tubeless. Um, you have also TT tyres, where some people are running TT tyres on road, um, like TT tubeless tyres on road uh, stages because they're super fast and you take the risk for puncture. So... There's been a lot of different changes like this um, um, and little like prototypes with cassettes and light materials. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a – that's the main thing that we change more or less than actually the the bike position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're more testing that than the bike, you know. Okay. I've, I'm on tubeless and I've gone low pressures like – surprisingly low like it's blowing my mind that i'm riding at 53 54 psi <laughs> yeah. you, you can Are run you at, that down at that level or what sort of can you give us a little summary of your tire arrangement yeah i mean with the tubeless normally i'll probably run like five five to five eight or uh, that's bar by the way wow. i don't know what the conversion is to psi now but it's just because they all use bar in france so mm -hmm. i have no idea uh but normally that 5.5 five to 5.8, so 5.5 five front, 5.8 at the back. And it can be a bit more depending on what road you, you're running on the day. You know, it can be 5.8 at the front and 6 at the back. But that's on the upper, upper end. And that's a 26, not a 28 mil. If you got a 28 mil tire, then for sure you'd probably be running more like, you know, 5 bar, more or less. I think Maharaj is running like 4 point something, like a high 4s. So okay. there's a... There's a pretty big difference between what people feel comfortable with in general, but the main thing for me is the 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 wheel for Campagnolo, the WTO is super super fast, the tubeless uh, wheel. So I've enjoyed using that the uh, recently um, in dry conditions. I think it's really really good like that. And I think for wet, it's better with tubular. 
just okay. just people have a compound works, you know, tube like you can have a lot more, uh, uh, like the stitching per inch, like 320 okay. TPI, that's what it's called. Uh, whilst I think a tubeless is far less because it has to be rigid enough to keep kind of it all together on the on the rim. Um, so I think tubular is nicer in the rain, per se. And also okay. the tubular is uh, lighter too. So maybe for big, big mountain stages, it's it's then worth to run tubular. Um, in general, tubeless is probably the best way to, to work from a day-to-day -day kind of basis. You said you have some experimentation. So did you try the bigger bag ties? Like, did you go to a 28 to a 30 even? You know, did you meddle around? Uh, I wouldn't try 30. There is 28s on one or two wheels, but I'm fine still with the with the 26 for like for now. You can really go into tires and wheels a lot, um, but yeah, it's it only works for us because we can experiment with all sorts of you know mm. tires, uh, of rims and tires pretty much. You know? yeah. And Rally and Campagnolo are happy to work with us, so it's really kind of actually kind of fun to to play around with it um especially for the days where it doesn't like it's not like your finale per se um you try to find the best solution before you know, your love well, in a stage win or whatever it is you know you tested the days before to see like what's my best kind of method um, what works what doesn't or what just feels not right even if it says it's the fastest kind of like setup doesn't mean it's going to feel like right either which is also a bit of a thing. <laughs> That's good insight. Thanks very much. We said we'd keep it quick because you've got family there and time is sort of uh, valuable. But could we just sort of conclude with a little summary of the program between the 2nd of April and 1st of July when the Tour de France won their car goes to Copenhagen? I've had like a, just a bit of a break after Catalonia, which was super, super nice and, uh, and, and refreshing uh, because it had been a big start of the year to prepare for March. Uh, and yeah, it was shitty and didn't finish Paranese, but the preparation and the form was there for Catalonia. So there's no need to change, you know, <laughs> the program to have one more race. Um, so the aim now is to go into Romandy um, and and see where it could put you. Last year, I sh probably should have finished on the podium if I didn't have such a bad final time for Alk. So it'd be nice to see if I could uh, finish on the podium in Romandy, really. Um, and then I go to altitude training, which is normal uh, with the whole team and the whole setup before Dauphiné and uh, Tour de France. I'm on a French team, so Dauphiné is is huge for, for, for as you deserve a situation. Uh, the team is based in, in, in Savoie, so it's the... <laughs> It is the region for all the team, so it's a big race for them, and then you have obviously the Tour de France. So, and in between, probably some recon stages, or becoming familiar with the cobbles and uh, stuff like that. So, it's pretty busy from uh, from Romandy. From now, I have a good chunk at home, mm -hmm. which is going to be a, a joy because I've been away from home for quite a while so far this year. Um, so, yeah. Enjoy it now before it gets very busy later. <laughs> it's been a pleasure watching you race your bike over the years and I, I wish you all the best for what's coming up. I know it's a big workload ahead of you. All the best and let's make sure that we stay in touch and, uh, and uh -huh. you stay on your bike and get away, stay away from the flu as well. <laughs> the flu's done now. I've definitely passed that that little hurdle. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot, man, and, uh, and uh, have a good day. Have a good ride, actually. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's rotten weather. I hope the snow clears in Andorra and you get to get outside. And uh, I was actually meant to go re do some recon of the Tour de France stages in the Pyrenees tomorrow, but that's definitely not on the card. So. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>